Hey guys, Anthony here with We Back Tesla and We Back Tesla because if Tesla fails, EVs fail and we can't have that. So please consider subscribing, become a part of the solution. And when you guys make the awesome decision of purchasing your Tesla, you can use our referral link down below and get some free supercharging. But that's enough of that. What are we talking about today? The thing that we have talked about most, which is range. The most popular questions I get are related to range when it comes to EVs. So I got an awesome question from one of you guys. Today, we're gonna try to answer that. And if your question isn't answered in this video, you can go check out our other range videos or leave a suggestion down below in the comments section and let's talk about it. Uh, I got plenty of other videos coming in the pipeline and I could use more ideas. I want this to be helpful for you guys. So please leave your suggestions below. But today's question at hand, what is the difference in energy consumption between the different highway speeds that you can travel? So what did I do? I went through the horrible inconvenience of taking this awesome Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus and I put that question to the test. How did I do it? I picked a mild day, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, and I had my climate in the car set at 72 degrees. And I went on Google Maps, I found a loop of highway that I could travel three different speeds, 60, 70, and 80 miles an hour, or 97, 113, and 129 kilometers per hour. For each one of these runs, I set my autopilot to those speeds and I just stayed the course. After I completed all three runs, I compiled the data and I am producing this video for all you beautiful people now. The hardest part of this test was definitely the 60 mile an hour portion because the loop of highway that I picked had a speed limit of 75 miles per hour and people be impatient. But I continued on, I threw on my flashers, and I only got a few death stares when I was going 60 miles an hour. I was committed to the test for science. But after all was said and done, I safely got the data. So let's talk about it. I've got two graphs that I created and that I wanna go over. And the first one's gonna be the watt hour graph. So these graphs show the watt hours per mile or watt hours per kilometer that I was able to achieve over the three different runs. So at the 60 mile an hour or 97 kilometers per hour run, I was able to achieve 185 watt hours per mile or 115 watt hours per kilometer. During the 70 mile an hour or 113 kilometers per hour run, I was able to achieve 204 watt hours per mile or 127 watt hours per kilometer. And during the 80 mile an hour, I achieved 223 watt hours per mile or 138 watt hours per kilometer. So the most interesting thing to me in this data was that the jump from the first run to the second run and the second run to the third run were virtually the same when it comes to additional energy consumption. So what this is showing that for every additional 10 miles an hour or 16 kilometers an hour, you end up using about 10% more energy to travel that. But as you'll see in the next graph, this car is still very efficient at high speeds. So let's go to the second graph. So the second graph was a little harder for me to figure out what data to plot to be most useful. I was gonna use the percentage that I used, but the percentage wasn't granular enough for the distance that I traveled to really make much sense in the graph. So what I did instead was I used the distance that was burned off the gasometer or the GOM as the cool kids call it versus the actual distance traveled. And in the graphs, you'll see a red line. And that red line is the break even line, meaning the amount you burned off the GOM or gasometer is equal to the actual distance that you traveled. And the distance traveled was obviously exactly the same for each run. That being 16.4 miles or 26.4 kilometers. So starting with the first run in blue, this is where I traveled 60 miles an hour or 97 kilometers per hour. I burned 14 miles or 23 kilometers off of the GOM while traveling 16.4 miles or 26.4 kilometers. So I traveled two miles or three kilometers more than what I burned off the GOM. Now looking at the second run in green, I was traveling 70 miles an hour or 113 kilometers per hour, and I burned 16 miles or 26 kilometers off of the GOM while traveling 16 miles or 26 kilometers. The GOM won't show you fractions of distance. So that second run was virtually at the break even point. And finally, the third run in yellow, traveling 80 miles an hour or 129 kilometers per hour, we actually burned 18 miles or 29 kilometers off the GOM while traveling that 16 and 26 kilometers. So again, like we saw in the watt hour chart, it's very even between the jumps as far as the difference in consumption. So going from run one to run two, we did two miles or three kilometers better than the break even point. And then jumping from run two to run three, we actually did two miles or three kilometers worse 
than the break-even point. And run two was obviously right at the break-even point. So what I take from this is on a mild 70 degree day Fahrenheit and 20 degrees Celsius, I feel confident that I'll be able to achieve the rated range or the guest range at a speed of 70 miles an hour or 113 kilometers per hour. And that's, that's a constant speed. So if your average speed is at 70 miles or 113 kilometers an hour with weather conditions just like what I had today, you'll be able to achieve the rated range. If your average speed is lower than that for any given trip in the same conditions, you can expect to do even better than what the rated range is. So this car I've been really impressed with as far as its efficiency in these early spring months. I'll be very, very curious if in the middle of the summer, if I conduct the same exact test, if I'll actually do even better. That's really all I have for you guys. I really hope that this was useful and helpful for anyone who's considering buying an electric car, specifically a Tesla. And if you are, if you're on the fence, please jump over, join us. It's amazing. These cars are fantastic. If you have any other questions related to electric cars that I didn't cover in this video, please leave a comment letting me know what you guys want to see or any other questions that you may have. Thank you guys so much for the support. I'll see you guys in the next one.